Imagine being able to memorize a shuffled deck of cards in under 13 seconds. Sounds impossible, right? Well, someone actually did it. A memory athlete named Zhu Lujin did it in an international memory competition in 2018. He memorized the order of a shuffled deck of cards in 12.74 seconds. That's faster than I could even shuffle a deck. My mind is blown. It sounds superhuman. If I had a memory like that, learning would be so easy. And if you're watching this video, you probably want the same thing. But the problem is most of us memorize things in the worst way possible. We rely purely on repetition. We reread, we reread again, and we hope that by repeatedly passing our eyes over the information, it will somehow lock into place. This will work eventually, but it is slow. So how are memory athletes so fast? How are they accomplishing this seemingly superhuman feat? What's the secret? Let's dig into it. What separates memory athletes from the rest of us isn't raw talent. When neuroscientists studied the brains of memory athletes, they found something shocking. Their brains weren't special. Their baseline memory totally average. They're just like me wasting their time looking for the car keys in the morning. So what's going on? It's purely about technique. Almost all memory athletes use a method called the memory palace. It's a strategy that helps tap into two of your brain's strongest memory systems for learning, your visual and your spatial memory. Think about it like this. Your brain is terrible at remembering random lists, but it's amazing at remembering people and places. For most of human history, we did not have books. So modern book-based academic learning is not brain friendly. Our brains were designed for survival, not modern academic learning. We evolved to remember, where was the food? Where is the danger? Who's a friend? Who's a foe? And how to get back home after exploring. The memory palace hijacks that ancient wiring. Here's how it works. First, you pick a physical space you know really well. Most people start with their house, their palace. Now walk through it in your mind and note the landmarks. Things that don't move. Your bed, your nightstand, your dresser, and TV. Memorize these items in order until you can walk through the space with your eyes closed. Congratulations, you have now created a memory palace. Next, you start placing information inside that space. Let's say I'm trying to memorize a shuffled deck of cards. First, you break it into small chunks. You never want to overload your working memory, which can only hold about four to five chunks of information. So I'll place three cards on the bed, three on the nightstand, three on the TV, and so on and so on until all the cards are placed. When I want to recall them, I just walk through that mental room. Each location cues the next set of cards. By anchoring the cards to familiar spaces, I'm engaging both visual and spatial memory. I'm also reducing cognitive load at the same time because I've created a schema, a mental framework that allows me to organize and retrieve information quickly. Memory athletes take it a step further with something called the person action object. PAO system. They assign a person, an action, and an object to every single card. For example, the first three cards in the shuffle deck are Queen of Hearts, Taylor Swift, Singing, Grass, Six of Clubs, Miley Cyrus, Dancing on a Wrecking Ball, Ace of Spades, Mickey Mouse, Biting a Hot Dog. Now we are going to use the PAO system to create an easy to remember visual image. You combine the three cards by taking the person from the first card, the action from the second, and the object from the third. So now you have Taylor Swift dancing on a hot dog. Then you place that crazy mental image on a memory palace landmark, like your bed. So now, in your memory palace, you have Taylor Swift dancing on a hot dog on your bed. Ridiculous. Absolutely. Impossible to forget? Yeah. Honestly, I almost regret teaching you this because now I know that you will have a hard time forgetting that image. I'm sorry, but that's also the magic of the memory palace. Here's why it works. It chunks information into vivid story-like scenes and organizes them spatially, the way we naturally learn. Instead of remembering 52 disconnected cards, you're remembering a handful of vivid scenes in familiar places. This drastically reduces cognitive load 
and plays to your brain's natural strengths. It's incredible ability to remember stories and visual details. I bet you you can tell me the details from a movie that you watched years ago. Our brains are built to handle this type of information. The result is an ordinary brain doing extraordinary things. Now, I'm not trying to turn you into a memory athlete. As cool as it is to memorize a deck of cards, it won't help you much on your biology midterm. That kind of memory is rote, not deep understanding. But there is a lesson here. Memory works better when there's a map, a schema. When you give your brain structure, a framework to anchor information like visuals, spatial context, or a story, you make learning stick. The Memory Palace is a beautiful example of this principle. When you build a study guide, you are building a version of the Memory Palace. Instead of furniture, your landmarks are key concepts. Your job is to map those key concepts into a big picture, a mind map of core ideas. Once you can see the big picture, then in future study sessions, you begin to layer on more details, layer after layer until you have a comprehensive understanding of your topic. Learning moves from simple to complex. But the issue is that in our information-rich world, many students jump right into complexity in an effort to learn quickly, but it has the opposite effect. It completely overwhelms their brains and results in cognitive fatigue. And this causes those students to quit in frustration because they don't get it. The other thing the Memory Palace demonstrates beautifully is the power of dual encoding. Plain and simple, dual encoding means that your brain remembers best when it stores the same information in different formats at the same time. The Memory Palace works so well because it stores information visually and spatially. Learning becomes even stronger when you add verbal labels. Your brain has dedicated areas for visual, spatial, and verbal information, and learning locks in when you combine all three. See it, organize it, say it. A simple example is a calendar. It gives you a visual representation of a month, important dates are labeled with words, and you can see where those dates fall in relation to each other. This combination lets you think clearly about time and your responsibilities. That is the real purpose of tapping into visual, spatial, and verbal brain processing. It supports clear, organized thinking. It can also help you remember facts more easily. For example, I know that spatial memory is both formed and stored in the right hippocampus. I remember this by picturing a hippo waving at me with its right hand. When I drive to work, I park in a parking garage with seven levels. For each level, I assign a visual. So if I park on third floor, I think level three and a tree. I would often forget which level I parked my car on until I started doing this. That's dual encoding in action. Here's what to do to learn quickly and efficiently. Give yourself enough time to learn. Exams are typically around three weeks apart. You should be studying that entire time. Memory athletes practice every day. When you learn, your brain is building neural networks. It's a physical process that largely happens while you're sleeping. You will learn much faster if you study an hour every day versus five hours in a single day. This concept is called spaced repetition and it is one of the most well-researched findings in modern learning theory. Build your mind palace. Build an initial study guide of key concepts. My favorite method is to do this by using a basic outline. Your goal is to build a simple framework that allows you to gradually layer in complexity. You do this by nesting supporting ideas under key concepts. It is exactly how you store information on your computer, a network of folders within folders that creates a branching chain of information that allows you to access knowledge quickly, and it gives you a place to store new information as you learn. Once you have your study guide, your own version of the memory palace, the next step is to retrieve that information from memory. When I was preparing for an exam, I would rewrite my study guide for memory again and again with nothing in front of me, no prompts. This technique is called the testing effect and modern learning research shows it is the most important study strategy we have. I filled entire notebooks this way. Every time I rewrote that guide for memory, I was teaching myself the material, and with each recall session, my understanding grew stronger and more detailed. When you follow these three steps and apply the lessons learned from the Memory Palace, you will stop collecting random facts and start using a learning system that aligns with how your brain works. When you tap into visual, spatial, and verbal processing, 
learning becomes calm, structured, and efficient. You will be able to start flexing your memory athlete muscles. If you found this helpful, hit like so more students can find it too. And if you want to continue to learn how to use neuroscience to boost your learning and productivity, please like and subscribe. That's what this channel is all about. I'm Dr. Eric Albinson, an education PhD and academic coach. And remember, your brain learns best when it's calm, structured, and curious. You got this.